At the beginning of this anime we will meet the protagonist called Kodaka. He is a blonde boy who unfortunately has a reputation for being a delinquent. At the beginning of this story he is transferring to the academy without chronicles. Kodaka has a hard time making friends. Just to make his situation a little more complicated he arrived late on the first day, which no longer left many people with a good impression of him. During the day when he is walking through the gym he sees a rather unusual scene. He peeks through the door and sees his classmate named Yuzora talking to an imaginary classmate of hers who wasn't there. And this imaginary friend of hers even has a name, his name is Tomo. And then, after seeing that very strange scene, Kodaka decides to enter the room. After that he and Yuzora manage to have a very friendly conversation, where they talk about the difficulty of making new friends at the gym. Kodaka then gives them the brilliant idea of creating a club to make friends. Yuzora takes that story so seriously that the next day, she takes Kodaka to meet her newly formed neighbor's club, which is basically committed to helping people make new friends. Despite his skepticism towards the school club's goals, Kodaka joins Yuzora in putting up recruitment posters. We meet another girl named Senna who joins them as they finish their exercises. But Yuzora doesn't like Senna much and so she closes the door behind her, dismissing the girl as the ideal girl for your club. That s because Senna is actually popular and is always being fawned over by the other students. However, Senna insists that they must become friends. And then she says that the people she hangs out with are usually just her doormats. And now she wants to have real friends and their club wasn't for that. After that, while Yuzora and Senna argue all day, Kodaka follows the club's statistics. For their first activity as a group, Yuzora sets up a monster hunting RPG. When the three of them are together, Yuzora looks around and sees a group of friends having fun together. And then she believes that this is a good way to meet new people. Therefore, all three members must bring their copy to the next meeting. When Senna returns, she is bragging about her position, which makes Yuzora completely irritated. Suddenly, during the game, Yuzora and Senna end up attacking each other. The game doesn't improve their relationship at all, because they keep getting in each other's way all the time. Then Senna set up a TV and a games console at the neighbor's club. However, she wants to play a girl's game, which she believes is far superior to the monster hunting game. When the girls start playing this game, they choose the most unfavorable reaction to Carrie, who is a pink-haired heroine. As they progress through the game, they leave Kodaka with more and more doubts. Development with Yuki, with the blonde heroine she is using, is hampered as the game progresses, leading to a tragic ending for Senna. Senna, on the other hand, then changes his mind about Carrie the next day. This is after she has completed all the routes in the game. She then gives the game to Kodaka and tells him to play and learn about women. She then reads a few sentences before panicking and crying as she leaves the the club room. Later that night, Kabato, who is Kodaka's little sister, is jealous of Kodaka for spending more time with the neighbor's club than with her. So, the next day, while watching Senna play another game, Kodaka reflects on his sister's comments. We see Natsum, a heroine of the game with green hair and a swimsuit, who appears in the game and asks Kodaka to teach her how to swim. Since the poor thing never learned to swim before, Kodaka accepts and instructs her to swim in a water park. While Kodaka and Senna are finishing lunch, Senna suddenly decides to get Kodaka in trouble. This is after she insults several boys who were messing with her. Now she forces Kodaka to help her. Senna then praises Kodaka for rescuing her. However, Kodaka is not happy with her for getting him into that trouble. After that, the two leave together on the bus, but they don't even sit next to each other. The next day, Kodaka back at school meets a girl named Maria Takayama. Maria is a 10-year-old teacher who was tricked by Yuzora. She was tricked into becoming the faculty advisor for the neighbor's club. Maria is trying to take back a room, saying that she didn't want to be a club advisor. However, Yuzora again deceives Maria by saying that the adults are in charge there. Maria accepts this argument and then Yuzora admits her as a full member of the club. Kodaka later informs Yuzora and Senna about the feeling of being followed. The girls then try to help him but their efforts only serve to damage Kodaka's reputation. So, later Kodaka arrests the stalker who was a female child named Yukimura and she considered Kodaka a role model and watched everything he did. Yuzora then invites Yukimura to join the club so she can learn more about Kodaka. Yukimura accepts that immediately and soon she starts serving Kodaka. The next day at school Kodaka rescues a girl named Rika Shiguma who is a scientist who passed out in a chemical accident. She meets Kodaka after being saved by him and intends to repay her in a very loving way. To this end, Rika then joins her neighbor's club where she reveals her interest in dirty magazines, especially those with dirty magazines, which makes Yuzora very uncomfortable to know. Then Kodaka realizes that Maria only eats fries, and he then decides to start bringing her nutritious meals. Kabato, on the other hand, is still jealous of Kodaka. Well now it seems like he prefers Maria to her, and while preparing Maria's lunch, Kodaka discovers that Yuzora rewards Maria as a token whenever she does something nice for her. Basically you are buying the child. After finishing Kodaka's meal, Maria starts referring to him as her big brother. Later, Senna finishes another dating simulator, and she wishes she could be inside one because everything is enchanting. The rich scientist, on the other hand, then sets up a virtual reality gaming system, and she then invites everyone to test a beta version of an RPG. When they begin they have conflicting statements about the costumes and talents assigned to the characters, but everything seems to be going well at first as they gain talent and level up. Only the 
the boss phase which, on the other hand, doesn't go as planned, because Maria ends up falling asleep and going offline in the middle of the game. Yuzora then takes the opportunity to trick Senna and defeats her, while Senna tickles Yuzora in retaliation. When the game ends, Kodaka is surprised to realize that his sister was playing in Maria's place. Basically Kabato went to meet him in the club room because she was missing him. Yuzora then decides to accept Kabato as an official member of the club. Later that day, Kabato starts climbing into Kodaka's bed, and she keeps saying all the time that she is Kodaka's only sister. It seems like someone here is unhealthy jealous of your brother, right? We see that Kodaka was having a dream about a childhood friend of his who he didn't get to say goodbye to before moving away. Kodaka then woke up with Kabato in his bed. When they are back at school, they talk about the success of their neighbor's club. They were managing to grow the club and they were proud of it. However, at a certain point in the conversation, Senna and Kodaka disagree, and they say they think their reputation was damaged after the club. However, leaving that aside, Senna asks the other members if they have ever visited a karaoke bar. As they continue to discuss the activities they participated in after joining the club. Despite the fact that Kodaka has already been to karaoke before, Yuzora, on the other hand, reports on her previous experience, and she says she visited several karaoke's around the city, which arouses the curiosity of all the other members. So, later, they go to karaoke together. After Yuzora underscore tries to get rid of the cashier because she thinks he's overcharging her, they go to the karaoke rooms. Yuzora will share a room with Senna, while the protagonist will be in a room with the other girls. What was supposed to be fun ends up becoming a serious dispute between Yuzora and Senna. When Kodaka is leaving the karaoke room, carrying his little sister on a piggyback ride, he then encounters Yuzora and Senna sitting at the reception with the biggest frown. The dispute between them was not at all friendly, as you can see. But anyway, after karaoke, Senna informs Kodaka that her father is interested in seeing him while they return home. This ends up making Yuzora jealous too. As summer approaches, Kodaka asks Yukimura to take over Maria's lunches. But Yukimura misunderstands what healthy food can be, so she prepares lunch for Maria with only diet products. After discovering that club members don't always show up regularly during the summer, Kodaka proposes another way for them to stay in touch. After they discuss a little about how to do this, they decide to use their own smartphones, as if that wasn't the most obvious option from the beginning. And so, the club members start passing their contacts to each other. The only surprise comes when Kodaka asks for Senna's number and she says she doesn't have a cell phone. Yuzora then starts mocking Senna by pretending to make a phone call in front of her. Later Senna called Kodaka in the middle of the night to ask about the make and model of her phone. The next day, the very spoiled Senna now appears with a new smartphone similar to Kodaka's. After that, Kodaka accidentally ends up seeing several very strange messages on the rich woman's cell phone. Apparently the young woman is going through a period that leaves her head full of dirty thoughts. Later that day we see that the air conditioning at Kodaka's house is broken. Poor little Kabato is so hot that she's dressed up as a vampire. She then follows her brother to the club room where she starts fighting with Maria when Maria refers to Kodaka as her older brother. Kabato doesn't like this at all so she bites Maria. After these events, Senna then starts to get closer to Kabato, as if he wanted to be friends with her. After the heroine of the game she was playing ends up being devoured by a shark, Senna comes up with the idea of everyone going to the pool together. However, after making this invitation, she ends up letting it slip that she went to the pool once alone with Kodaka. All the girls in the club turn to Kodaka, and he soon clarifies the situation by inviting everyone to go to the pool. However, on that day the pool has a special discount so it is simply full. Zori and Rika decide to leave early. The crowd was so big that they couldn't stand to stay there. When Kodaka finds out about this, he decides to go after them. However, he only arrives in time to see them getting on the bus and leaving. He then turned to the rest of the club who also decided to head home. Therefore, they decide to relocate that beach activity. Zori asks everyone to wear swimsuits to club events that day. When the other members arrive at the club, Zori is there wearing a bikini and a horse mask. Senna then offers Zori his own beach house as an alternative to the crowded pool. The club approves the idea, referring to the place as a training ground. Senna then contacts Kodaka the next day and invites him to the house to meet his father. Her father's name is Pegasus and on the other hand she is so rich that she has a butler called Estella. Kodaka and Kabato then arrive at her house just in time for dinner. And while they are having dinner, Pegasus criticizes Kodaka's father. However, the protagonist doesn't care much about this and does his best to make dinner enjoyable. As time passes, they stay there so long that the last bus has already passed. As Kodaka and his sister can't leave anymore, they receive an invitation to spend the night there. Then Pegasus gives Kodaka a drink while Senna takes Kabato to take a shower. Pegasus, on the other hand, just sits there talking about the stories he had already shared with Kodaka's father. However, as he drank a little more than he should have, he ended up sleeping in Kodaka's bed. Just when Kodaka decides to look for help, he finds his sister running out of Senna. The next day when Kodaka wakes up he can't remember anything that happened. He has a bad headache and doesn't remember anything at all. But the day has finally arrived and the neighbor's club then goes together to Senna's beach house. As soon as they arrive they don't waste any time and go straight to the beach. The group then begins applying sunscreen before entering the water. However, even at that moment, confusion ends up between Senna and Yuzora. After all the confusion due to the embarrassment, 
embarrassment he experienced, Senna runs away from the line in shame. Later Kodaka finds Senna on the balcony as the sun was setting. He calms her down by lying once again by stating that he didn't see anything big. The next day after a day at the beach Kodaka prepares dinner with items he bought at the local market. Soon they realize that they don't have much money. Then the group members realize that they didn't prepare very well. And they then decide to end that trip with a flourish by telling each other horror stories. It was supposed to be a fun activity, but Yuzora started telling a story about a haunted school. The big problem with this is that during the night all the girls end up being scared of that story. And they go one by one calling Kodaka during the night to take them to the bathroom. Even Yuzora who told the story is scared of her own story. Well, I confess that I even felt sorry for Kodaka for having to take the girls to the bathroom all the time. After all this chaos the group starts talking about the upcoming summer festival. Yuzora then says that she has no interest in attending the festival because there were a lot of people and it bothered her. Rika is also excited due to her latest experience at a summer festival. As they didn't come to any conclusion about this, the scene then gives the idea of them going out to eat typical Japanese food. Finally, there's an idea that everyone agrees on at once. For the occasion, the girls then dress in traditional Japanese kimonos to go to dinner. B in the end they all end up going to the festival. The only one who didn't wear a kimono was Yuzora, who thought it was really stupid. To everyone's surprise, they managed to have fun together while at the festival. Everything was going great, but in the end they decided to play with some fireworks. But unfortunately, in the middle of all this fun, Yuzora's hair ends up catching fire. To prevent the fire from spreading, the protagonist takes a bucket of water and throws it on Yuzora's head. After that, the poor girl who was always saying that she didn't like festivals ends up leaving there completely embarrassed and leaves alone. The club members then go days without having any news about Yuzora. She no longer showed any signs of life and disappeared, returning only when classes resumed. To everyone's surprise, when they meet her again at school they notice that she now has short hair. The funny thing is that at that moment when the protagonist looks at her with short hair he notices that she was actually his childhood friend that he had so many flashbacks to all the time. The point here is that Yuzora knew from the beginning that she already knew the protagonist, but she was disappointed that he couldn't remember her no matter how much time passed. At this moment we have a quick flashback where we see that when the girl was talking to herself she was actually doing that to get Kodaka's attention, so much so that her imaginary friend's name was actually the same name she called Kodaka when they were children, and so the whole time she was just looking for a way to make Kodaka remember her. She even went ahead with the idea of creating the neighbor's club just to spend more time with Kodaka. Everything was planned by her so that in the end Kodaka would finally remember her. This whole plot twist leaves Kodaka very confused and he is disappointed for not having remembered her before. But all the time Kodaka remembered that his childhood friend was called Sori and he was a boy. So he was really feeling really, really bad. Yuzora told him that she also had a big revelation to tell him the day he left. After all, they separated because Kodaka was moving. The plan that day was to appear in a skirt to reveal to him that she was actually a girl. But she never got the chance to do that because in the end he had to leave without saying goodbye to her. There's so much plot twist that Kodaka can't do anything other than apologize for being a bad friend. He just apologizes to her for moving away without saying goodbye to her. But he says that wasn't his intention, he wanted to have a decent farewell to her. His plan that day was precisely to reveal to her that he was moving, but as they were just two children they didn't get to have the last dialogue they expected. Anyway, after that Yuzora asks Kodaka to keep their past as best friends a secret. This would raise a lot of suspicion in the group since they had never mentioned anything like this. After that they return to the club together and the girls can barely recognize who is walking next to Kodaka. Precisely the scene where he was always fighting with Yuzora was the first to recognize her. Now all the girls are happy to see that Yuzora is back. Finally the neighbor's club is once again complete. Be now we're finishing this meme and also finishing this recap. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like, it helps the channel a lot. If you are not yet subscribed here, subscribe because now there are two videos every day. And I'm just bringing you the best full summaries so subscribe so you don't miss out. Your registration is free and I promise to reward you for it with lots of incredible anime that I will present. Combined? But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for being incredible otakus. So we'll see you in the next video talking about another epic anime. Thanks bye bye.